A warning from the CDC after a dozen fungal meningitis deaths are tied to clinics in Mexico. The victims were women here in the U.S. who traveled south of the border to get cosmetic procedures. The CDC says all of these women were given an epidural, anesthesia, which ultimately led to their symptoms. Tonight we're hearing from a Valley woman who underwent one of these surgeries and barely survived. Fox 10's Marissa Sarbach has her story. Alondra Lomas is a 27 year old mom of two. After her second C-section, she wanted what's known in the plastic surgery world as a mommy makeover. As a medical assistant here in Phoenix, she did some research and it led her to a doctor in Mexico with results she liked. She flew from Phoenix to Mexico for that Brazilian butt lift and liposuction, but got significantly more than she bargained for. Months later, Alondra was diagnosed with fungal meningitis, a rare infection in the brain and spinal cord that is extremely difficult to cure. And in some cases, it can be deadly. So March 13th was the day I had my surgery. March 31st, I felt my first symptoms of a headache and spinal pain that when I would walk, it would hurt my spine. Um, I did contact, I tried to contact the doctor back in Mexico, he, I didn't get an answer. So I got, contacted the coronator. She then said that she got, was able to reach out to the doctor and that he said it was normal. Days of feeling normal, followed by days of feeling anything but. May 5th was when I finally felt something is wrong. I started with the chills. Mind you, in May, it's already hot here in Arizona. I had my leggings, my sweater on, my socks, and I'm like, what is going on? Something's not right. Alondra was in a Facebook group with other women getting similar procedures done at the same clinic in Mexico. While she got more sick, she came to the frightening realization she wasn't alone. Facebook Messenger, because I, um, we, we got along in that group of surgery. So when I saw that, hey, this girl is sick, let me reach out to her and ask her, like, what symptoms, you know? And so, you know, when I, the doctor told me it's meningitis, I reached out back to her and I told her, well, I might have what you have. After suffering from hallucinations, weakness in her spine and down her legs, headaches and nausea, an MRI at St. Joe's Hospital in Midtown Phoenix finally showed signs of meningitis. All of a sudden... It was Lauren Robinson, and she's passed away now. Okay. Some of the other women suffering similar symptoms started dying. It, it, it's kind of hard, you know, being in a hospital and all you have is your phone and you're seeing, whoa, like, another one passed away. Another one. Oh my God, she's sick like that? Like, is that going to happen to me? The CDC issued a warning to anyone who had procedures under epidural anesthesia at the Riverside Surgical Center or Clinica K3 in Matamoros, Mexico, from January 1st to May 13th of this year, that they could be at risk for fungal meningitis. That's when Alondra reached out to her surgeon in Mexico. Okay, I'm sick. Like, is, is there any response that you're going to give us? Is there anything you're going to say about it? Do you know anything about it? Like, you know, and then I reached out to his Instagram page that he has, and all I got back was, it's not our fault. Then she says what she was lesson. suddenly kicked out of his Facebook Thank group for patients. Health officials eventually identified 10 confirmed cases, 9 suspected cases, 14 probable cases, and 12 deaths. Alondra's infectious disease doctor at St. Joe's needed to figure out how to keep her from becoming number 13. It would be the most serious, I would say, of anything I'd seen. Dr. Tatiana Shekel says patients with bacterial meningitis typically respond to antibiotic treatment within 48 hours. But fungal meningitis is a microscopic organism resistant to almost everything. This kind of fungus is something that has to be introduced physically into the spinal fluid. It won't just develop spontaneously. You know, it. obviously I wasn't there and I don't know, but it's... it. It is plausible that the uh, an aesthetic that was injected had the contamination with this uh, organism. While Alondra's doctors couldn't be sure of what caused it, they were certain. If the antifungal medications didn't start working, and fast, there wouldn't be a patient left to treat. There was some improvement initially, and we thought, well, maybe we have a kind of have a hold on this, and we're going in the right direction, and then there was sudden worsening, and I was very, very scared, very nervous for her that if we don't do something immediately different, then she's going to die. Dr. Shekel says the infectious disease department at St. Joe's has experience with a certain type of fungus that doctors in most regions wouldn't be familiar with, valley fever, and it worked in their favor. 
where we're in a unique position where we have um, this injectable antifungal which can go straight into the central nervous system. Nowhere else in the country they can do that. So, um, and so we were able to, I think that's what saved her life. Alondra isn't in the clear completely, but she is finally on the road to recovery. I do have a little bit of like that survivor's guilt, you know, but I'll get over it. And I know it's, it's for a reason and for a purpose. And while she isn't opposed to plastic surgery, she says this is the last time she plans to go under the knife. It's weird because I'm, I'm satisfied. You know, I want to be just me. But now that I look at myself with what I went through, it's kind of like, for what? For what? Marissa Sarbach, Fox 10 News. By the way, we reached out to the clinic in Mexico to ask about these warnings from the CDC, but so far we have not heard back.